Good morning and welcome to our 11 o'clock Parish Communion. Welcome especially if this is your first time joining us today. My name is Tonya and I'll be leading us through the service. We start with our first hymn, Praise to the Holiest in the High. Mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy 
and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you and me pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, time for amendment of our life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Gospel is taken from Mark chapter 6. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place, all by yourselves, and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure, not even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognised them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns around ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognised him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It may not be immediately apparent that our Bible reading, the Gospel that we heard read just a moment ago, is made up of two parts. And there is a great void between the two parts. In Mark chapter 6, that void is filled by the account of the feeding of the 5,000 and the following account of Jesus walking on the water. So what we have in our reading today is a kind of compendium from the beginning and the end of those two important incidents. That doesn't matter because when we look at them we see how Jesus is shown as being compassionate in three different ways. First of all, he's compassionate to his disciples. He sent them out and remember that most of them were fishermen. Most of them didn't have a background in marketing or sales. And he sent them out to do missionary work, to preach and teach about God's kingdom. So no doubt they would have found this difficult and exhausting work. And when they returned to him, he wanted to give them a break. So he intended to take them apart to a quiet place. But that aim was foiled by the fleet-footed crowd who got there first. At the end we hear how Jesus was compassionate in the way in which he healed those who were brought to him, those who were sick. He was generous with his healing power. He didn't stint himself. And we hear in the middle of the reading this. Jesus saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd and he began to teach them many things. I want to use these examples of Jesus' compassion to reflect on the period of lockdown that we've been through, the period that is about to come to an end. I think as a parish we've demonstrated our ability to be compassionate and generous to one another in a number of ways. Perhaps most conspicuous, because so different from what we did previously, is the way in which a whole team of people has been prepared to contact 
every member of our congregations regularly and frequently. Initially to see whether there were any practical things that we could do to help. Latterly to provide just a contact to know that someone was thinking of everyone else. And of course it's changed its shape a bit. Some people have said they don't want to be called regularly. So others have said, well, I want, I'd like to have a call, but only occasionally. Other people have said, well, I'd prefer you to contact me by email. So we've done all those things and we're still doing those things. And it seems to me that that is a great thing that we have done, a great way of showing compassion to one another. But there's another thing which you might not think of as compassion, but is certainly generous. If you remember at the end of last year, we found that we had a huge financial deficit and we asked people if they would contribute to overcoming that deficit, to setting it right, and perhaps to consider giving more to the church for the future. And the response has been extraordinary. First, in the number of people who gave as a result of our request, and also because some people gave with exceptional generosity so that indeed our finances for last year were put right and the finances for this year are looking in a much more healthy position than they otherwise would have done. Compassion and generosity to others again. But finally, I want to note that in the verse that I quoted, verse 34, Jesus, when he had compassion and saw the people like sheep without a shepherd, he began to teach them many things. In spite of the adverse circumstances, we in the ministry team have tried to continue to teach We've continued to maintain as best we can our services. For a while they were all online. But then the time came when we were allowed to come back to church. And it's a huge credit to the other three clergy, to Reverends Julian, Sonia and Gemma, that immediately they were prepared to take services in church, even when it wasn't entirely clear that it was really safe to do so. So it's a huge credit to them and to their wish to provide as normal an offering of services as we could in the circumstances. We've done other things. We've had our Lent lectures, lectures on the resurrection and ascension. We introduced thoughts for the day all with the aim of following Jesus' example and continuing to proclaim the good news of God's kingdom in our midst, even in the midst of a lockdown. So it seems to me that in those ways we have followed the example of Jesus as best we can, fallibly and not as perfectly as we might but we have shown compassion to other people. And what I'd want to encourage us to do as the world changes tomorrow with the removal of legal restrictions and as our smaller world changes too with our welcome to Reverend Leonard, as a new chapter opens for us in our parish's life. I hope that we'll continue to be compassionate and generous towards one another. I think it's relevant to the circumstances that we will find ourselves in generally to quote what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 8. Be careful that the exercise of your freedom does not become a stumbling block to the weak. 
we've shown that we can have an eye to the most vulnerable amongst us. We shouldn't abandon that. That, I'm sure, would be Jesus' watchword in these circumstances. It should be ours too. And although there are uncertainties, the pandemic is by no means over, there will be other difficulties for us to confront and overcome. I'm confident that we'll do as well under Reverend Leonard's leadership from tomorrow onwards as we have managed to do over the last 16 months. And so to God be the glory forever and ever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And we now have our prayers for today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in your eternal presence and give thanks for the spiritual community we share here today. You are the breath of all creation and all life and you call us to bring your love into the world, regardless of differences and without discrimination, so we may share that life generously and in abundance. So we pray today for ourselves and for our need of health in body, mind and spirit, so we can do your will in this life with compassion, forgiveness and love for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your blessings on Reverend Leonard and his family as they prepare to join our parish this week to begin this new chapter of their lives, and we thank you for guiding them to us. We pray for the people of our parish, especially those who feel excluded, ignored or exploited, and help us work together to build a community as open and generous as your love shown to us in Jesus Christ. Draw close to those who are being baptised and those who are being married in the coming weeks and thank you for bringing to them your gifts of love, hope and joy for their futures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for those whose lives are darkened by any kind of pain, distress or grief that the light of Christ will bring them hope and comfort, knowing that they are not alone, for you are always with them. Thank you for the lives of those who have left us in death, and we pray that their memories be a blessing and comfort to their grieving families. We especially pray for all those named on our new sheets and those in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer you these prayers in faith, knowing you hear us. By the power of your Holy Spirit, work within us and among us to bring your kingdom values into this world. Just as we receive your gifts of mercy, comfort and love, may we offer the same to all those who cross our paths and help us remain faithful to your teachings. Heavenly Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are watching this live on Facebook, we now come to the piece. Please feel free to type in your message to those watching alongside us. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God. 
In one body by the cross, we meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all men, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your, the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are but one body because we all share in one bread. God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, 
May we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion, that in his saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love, for he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Before our final hymn, just a couple of notices, just to let you know if you are not already aware that Reverend Leonard will be in his service will be tomorrow evening, Monday. Um, unfortunately, it's by invitation only because of all of the guidelines that we are having to follow. Please do be praying for him and his family as, as he begins his ministry in our parish. And please do be continuing to pray for the wardens who are having to make some really difficult decisions as we look at the guidelines that may change over the next few weeks and months. And for us as a ministry team too, that we will make the right decisions to uh, keep everybody safe and feeling able to come to church. Let's just have our final hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. So the final blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Go.